at um, verse uh, Mark thirteen twenty four. Mark thirteen twenty four. I think that, yeah, that's where we got to last time. <clears throat> we talked about, uh, let me wait till I get a green light from Chess. There I am. I'm green lighted so I can hit the gas pedal and go. So last week we did Mark 13, 1 through 23, which is a graphic description of, of the destruction of Jerusalem, temple and all, everything. Uh, inside and out, Jerusalem was destroyed about A.D. 70. And <clears throat> Jesus was sharing with his disciples what's going to uh, transpire and precede the destruction of Jerusalem. And uh, his words obviously come to pass. And so what Jesus does here is he merges the destruction of He uses, excuse me, sir. I'm not used to that being there. So what Jesus does here is he gives us a merging of prophecies. And so he's going to use the destruction of Jerusalem as a type of the destruction of the world. And so he merges those two prophecies. Um, and <clears throat> in verse 24, I mean, you can, we're not going to read all those verses again, but in verse 24, you can see the shift from the destruction of Jerusalem to the second coming of Jesus Christ. In those days after that, uh, tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars of heaven will fall, the powers that are in heaven will be shaken. And they will see, everybody's going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And that is literally the second coming of Jesus Christ. And um, Paul says it, John, in the book of Revelation, every eye will see him. It's not a hidden thing. It is uh, visible and uh, indescribable, uh, you guys, just indescribable. There's no, there's nobody that can contain the awesomeness. You can, you can envision it. It's in the Bible. You can believe it, but it's bigger than we can contain the fact that Jesus, when he comes, is literally going to destroy earth as we know it. Okay? So, when Jesus comes back, nobody is left alive. That is in the book of Revelation, crystal clear, okay? Uh, because he's coming with vengeance. Now, in verse 27, before Jesus makes the visible return, he does something invisible, okay? He will send His angels to gather together His chosen people, the elect. The elect are those who are God's chosen people, chosen before the foundation of the world. And God did not choose people based on whether they were good or bad. He chose people based on His sovereign good pleasure and election. And so... To, to make it easier, the elect are everyone that has put faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? God's people. He will gather them from the four winds from the uttermost part of the heaven and the earth. And so, to sum it up, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus raptures His people out. Now, in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, before you can blink your eye, there is an immediately seizure of God's people taken up off of the earth. Why? Because He's about to destroy 
earth as we know it with great destruction and um, with his presence and his power. In 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter, Peter even uses atomic energy words. And so, uh, to give you just a picture, have you all ever seen the, some of the shots from the video shots from the A-bomb and uh, how that it took one guy who was sitting here and it literally plastered his shadow on the wall when, when the sound waves were so powerful it just, if, I don't know if y'all have ever seen old video footage of that when they tested and so on, but when the sound waves started coming, I mean, it, it's just, I mean, it's like, I don't know, 10,000 tornadoes, but one guy plastered his shadow to the wall. And so when Jesus comes, he's coming with tremendous atomic energy, and boom. Those are words that Peter uses in 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, so, any questions y'all have? So the invisible, the gathering together of the elect is the invisible known as the rapture or the resurrection. It happens suddenly, without a sound. There will be a sound of a trumpet in heaven. But and once God's people are off of planet earth, then Jesus comes literally and just destroys it. That's in the book of Revelation chapter 19, at the second coming of Christ uh, in days of judgment and vengeance. Is that any questions y'all have on that or anything you want to... Is this yeah. really the church? What do you mean? That Pegging up in. Yes, that's right. Right. Um, that's the bride of Christ, the church. That's right. <laughs> um, it's the bridegroom... Hallelujah day. Yeah, it's the bridegroom season up the bride. Um you're exactly right. Because, and remember the analogy on that is Jesus said, uh, I will come like a thief in the night. And then he gives uh, Matthew 25, Jesus gives a parable of ten virgins. Five are wise, five are foolish. And the five foolish didn't have oil in their lamp. They weren't genuinely uh, converted to Christ. And when he came, when, you know, when the bridegroom come, they, they weren't ready, uh, which is the essence of, of this teaching, and that's where we'll go in just a second. But the essence of all teaching of prophecy, okay, the bottom line of all prophecy, read Jesus, Paul, John, Peter, whoever, and the essence is readiness. You don't know when he's coming. Matter of fact, let's read, um, let's pick that up down in verse uh, 32. Get 32 on there, Chad. Of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not even the angels are in heaven, neither the Son but the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. The Son of Man, it's like uh, the second coming of Jesus is like uh, as a man who took a far journey. He left his house. He gave authority to his servants, to every man he, he gave a job to do, and he commanded the porter to watch. And watch ye, therefore, you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cock crowing in the morning, or early morning. And uh, lest coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. And the very final word is the essence of all prophecy. Okay? Because let's just accept the fact that God ain't going to tell us everything. Uh, especially about the coming of the Lord. No man's going to know the day or the hour. And listen, listen. You can say, and I can say, well, didn't the Bible say there's going to be weather patterns and wars and and rumors of war, yeah, but has that not been for a long time happening, right? You know, I did a study one time, and I should have brought it, but it's crazy when you go back 
2,000 years between uh, when Jesus said he was coming back till today. And you will be amazed at how many dates were set people just knew he was coming. Especially at the thousand, thousand years A.D., people were like, everybody was ready. And there's been all kinds of, of people who have set dates. Remember we talked last week, Jehovah's Witness founder, a Mormon founder, they all gave dates for their people. And one of them was even silly enough, people sold their houses. And the question was asked, why? <laughs> I mean, why sell your house if you know Jesus is coming the next day? Unless maybe maybe you don't believe your founder. And, uh, of course, they all were proven idiots. And so is anybody else an idiot that, that thinks they know the day or the hour when Jesus is coming. You know, I don't, y'all probably never heard. When I was young, teenager, I don't know where we had the book. Hal Lindsey was a guy who wrote a book called The Late Great Planet Earth. And it was like so millions of copies, and Hal Lindsey believed a generation's 40 years. So he, Jesus uses the word generation. So Hal Lindsey said, Israel become a nation in 1948. So a generation is 40 years, so he gave, I don't know how many reasons why Jesus is coming in 1988. He did that. And uh, you're like, Poor Hal, he's still on TV every now and then, but, you know, he, he, he had to eat crow, and anybody will that, that thinks they know the date. So, um, before I close with the application Jesus gave, any questions y'all have about the second coming of Jesus Christ? Any? Any? So remember, remember those two events in verse number um, 26 and 27, the invisible... The church is gone, rapture out. And by the way, let me say this before we we're hurry. All my life I heard, okay, and I'm not going to fill in a lot of this stuff, but there was a Bible that every preacher owned in the 40s and 50s. We even had a pastor at Core Hill when I went, and he would say, when he would say, I'm preaching from so-and-so text today, it's on page so-and-so in your Schofield reference Bible. C.I. Schofield put together a Bible, and every preacher had it, and it was like, but there was a lot of messy stuff he put in there. And one of the messy things that, that he put in there was, this big guy named the Antichrist is going to sign this covenant with Israel for seven years, and then the rapture is going to happen, and all Christians will be gone. Then there's going to be a seven-year great tribulation period. But, but the Christians won't be here. So that was preached for years. I even preached it and believed it you know, until I started studying the Bible instead of taking on hearsay. And lo and behold, I've challenged everybody I know, anybody, I've challenged them, show me one text. One text in the whole Bible where there's a seven-year tribulation period. It ain't even in there. It's nowhere in there. But you, it's funny how we just catch on to stuff, you know, because the C.I. Schofield Reference Bible said it. So, so the Antichrist signs his thing with Israel. Then there's a seven-year tribulation. And, then, and in there, the temple's rebuilt. Uh, it's just, I ain't even going to go there. It's just, it's just crazy. But here's the bottom line. Jesus, Paul, Peter, uh, and John all four of them, and John that wrote Revelation, they all four say the same thing, and that's this. Someday, it's imminent. Nothing has to happen, okay? As far as we know, the only thing that's really going to happen is things are going to get worse before they get better. Everything has to come to a head. We have to come full circle it's going to get bad. I'm not, I'm not sitting up here to, you know, to give you, if you're a non-Christian, it's, it's better than bad. I know that's not a word, but, but if you're a Christian, it's okay. It's not bad news. But the world's going to get worse. There's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be an apostasy. We're seeing the rise of such things. But all I know is somewhere with no warning, every Christian that's breathing will be instantaneously seized up into the presence of the Lord. Do you 
you think the people would have anything to do with God and calling the date when they sent his son out to get his people? Say that again, Dad. I didn't understand. Do you think that I know God probably ain't got a date on when he's going to send his son for his people? That he does have a date. But the people could cause him to bring forth that date by turning again. No, no, no. I mean, it's set in stone. And uh, the, the people's, the apostasy of the people aren't. Are you asking, are they going to cause God to speed up the day? Yeah, because look what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He sent yeah. someone in there to find out how many righteous you know. Yeah. He even so. put a number on it 10, mm -hmm. 5, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And this world I'm talking about today that's in existence, mm -hmm. could people get cold enough heart that they could force God to? No. Uh, no, because that would make God dependent on man, and he would immediately cease to be God. He would cease to be sovereign. God is not driven by our good or bad. Um, God is just extremely patient, Dad. Uh, and God has it on his calendar in heaven. It's already there. The, even the, like, for example, Hebrews 9, 27 is appointed unto man once to die. So we all have that appointment, right? Um, and, so, and so you could ask the question, well, if I go out here and jump in front of the traffic, would I speed that up? You, <laughs> you wouldn't speed it up. You, you'd die probably, but you would, you know, I mean, so... It, it's those questions you have to be careful on that, but but uh, it's settled with God. God does nothing dependent on men. It's already settled. Now, now with that fact, um, the world will come to, in Thessalonians, a great falling away and an apostasy when it will be uh, a global thing. And uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Uh, you know it's, the world is in a worse shape now than it was back when you were a little boy. Things were different then. You, you, um, you all played up and down the streets till midnight, not that, having no fear. Of well, and I know that, and I know what you're saying, but I also remember the KKK marching in the Christmas parade. So, so you know, <laughs> there were things that, that seem worse now, but you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, I mean, we talk about the good old days, but the thing about it then, I think a lot of stuff happened then that happens now. You just didn't have media to tell you about it. You, all you got to do is a little genealogy work, and you'll find out there was a lot of, uh, you know, stuff. <laughs> well, back then, very seldom you heard of a guy getting shot Yeah, yeah. in any big city. Yeah, I know, but I know what you're saying. But I will tell you this on on Dad's note, and I think this is worth saying at this point. Um, there was always bad stuff. There will always be bad stuff. But I, I can say this. I think from all my heart, I'm not trying to be fanatical or or whatever. But when my wife and I started ministry in the '80s, um. Just about every country church we ever went to in revival or whatever was full. And uh, there was a, y'all know what I'm trying to talk about. There was no, um, there was a guy, let me just say this to just to try to make sense of it. There was one guy in Glasgow. Dad knows his name. And he was one guy. And we were like, you know, he, he was a, he was a man that wanted to be a woman, and he dressed like a woman. He was up on the square, and the whole county knew he's a weirdo. Okay? Now it's normal. Okay? <laughs> now I'm like, okay, I mean, come on, you guys. Things, our culture, we're facing a tsunami culture blast. 
that I have never experienced in all of my days of ministry. And it is a culture tsunami that's going to eventually test us to the bone. One of the two of the greatest men that ever lived, let me say this as an example, and then I'll close out here. The two of the greatest men that ever walked the earth were Charles and John Wesley. They were brothers. Charles was the songwriter. John was the preacher. And John and Charles, God used them to start a movement called the Methodist movement. In the, in the uh, late 1700s now, that blazed across. And if you've ever read the early days of Methodism and the fire and, and, and so on, a major evangelical denomination that we all probably may have some roots attached to. Major, one of the major top evangelicals has crumbled before our eyes in the last few weeks. Because they, the, the Methodist church decided to go woke and ordain lesbians, transgenders, everything under the sun. And they have had, as of like a few days ago, 5,800 churches to pull out and say, we don't want to be a part of it. And these almost 6,000 churches now have barely enough to keep the lights on, and, they, and they've given them, I think Chaz Matt reminded us last week, maybe till September because the Methodists own their buildings. Now, I don't know about you. It's not that I'm a big Methodist guy, but I'm trying to get you to understand a major, old, almost 200-year-old evangelical movement has crumbled in a day over the culture. That's why a new life has, has to have in our bylaws, which we voted on. We have to have a thing that, that two men can't marry in this building. And two women can't marry in this building. And the reason we had to put it in there, because we could be sued. We could be sued. Now that it's in there, we're okay, because we have that coverage. I mean, so, so I'm sorry, y'all, I got long-winded to explain we are facing moms and dads, good Christian moms and dads are having to deal with this stuff. And when these, no, I don't have to spend all night in the woke movement, but major businesses from Disney, and they are targeting our children. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, dad, you are right in a sense. We're at a day that I've never faced, and I, don't, I think we're at a point of no return. I don't see this leaving. I see churches even, it's you know now major, uh, not Bethes weren't the first ones, and now the Pope sends out a thing, maybe the Catholic Church needs to rethink having transgenders and all these people, these weirdos. Uh, I know, I, I'm live stream, they could probably get me big using the word weirdos, but you know, if you go to the dictionary and look up the word weird or strange, um, I'm sorry. Hey, yeah, Jim. Yeah. Go figure that. They're hurting bad on that. Uh, one of their suppliers was running 24 7, 364. Yeah. Every line. And now they've had to cut production down to two lines. And they're not even running full time now. See? And, and you know, here's the th- here for my world and where I live and where. The, where the Bible has me, in a sense, and I don't mean this negative, but Budweiser, Target, and, and Coles, and Cracker Barrel, the church is what scares me. The world, you expect it. But you don't expect God's people who try to go by the Bible to do this, right? So to, to, so, to sum up our conversation... I think that is exactly right. Uh, the apostasy may be creeping up on us, which is the beginning, Jesus called it, to, to use Jesus' terminology in Mark 13, Jesus called it the beginning of sorrows 
or birth pangs. That's what the word sorrows in the Greek means. It means the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, as a woman gets close to having the child, the pains get closer and the pains get more intense. And Jesus is saying before I return, that's exactly how it's going to be. Just things that you've always heard about, have always been, are going to get stronger. Anything else? I mean, I don't want to cut anybody off if anybody wants to. Go ahead, Brother Jim. Of coming of the Christ and the destruction of the world, similar to the destruction of Jerusalem, it, it, I will leave no stone. That's right. That's right. So the church was on the wrong path, and it is no more. The Methodist. Right. Right. Am I making the right correlation? Here? No. I, I, let me say something and see if I'm we're connecting. Okay. Okay. Peter said, judgment begins at the house of God. And so, is that maybe what you're hinting at? Like, the church is getting sifted? Because not everybody that is in the church is truly Christian. Is that sort of what you're saying? It's the way the Jews were utilizing the synagogue and the church, okay? Not in God's fashion, I guess that's the best terminology I can come up with, is similar to the Methodist. The Methodist church is not using the church in God's fashion okay. by appointing those. So, there you go. It's destroyed. Excellent point. Excellent point. Okay. Yes, yes. It, 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 absolutely. No, no, and, and, it, and it's a very, very, very good point, and let me tell you why, because the book of Revelation begins with seven letters to seven churches, churches that had compromised with the culture, and Jesus says, I'm coming to judge you. I'm going to remove your candlestick. You're not going to shine. And so it did happen to those which are types of any church. You know what I'm saying? So, good point. Excellent. I mean, things are like creeping up on us and, and we need to wake up. Amen. Good point, Jim. Anybody else? I just want to jot something real down. We'll, we'll, we'll go home. There's a word I want to use as an application in Mark 13, verse number uh, 36. I have four words that begin with the letter I. If you have one, you can uh, help me here. That's probably too little for you to see. Okay. Now, there's this word that is a fantastic metaphor that describes a great majority of the world's mentality toward the second coming of Jesus Christ. Idiotic? <laughs> no, that's not one of mine, but... Uh, okay, uh, Les has got my first word. Ignorant. Used as a metaphor, when you're asleep, you don't know what's going on. The thief is peeking around your door, but you are asleep. It's a metaphor for not mentally knowing What's going on? And so Jesus said the world toward His second coming, most of the world, okay, we're just a handful here tonight talking about one of the greatest events ever, ever, ever. And this world gives a hoot about it. Am I right? It's already happening because, like you said, there's not many, many churches, there are many people in the church. Oh, bless. already sleeping. Amen. Second, Thess Second Thessalonians 2, 3, there's going to be that great falling away. 2, 3, and 4, a great falling away. So I'm going to use a verse here. We won't turn to it unless Chaz wants to. Hosea 4, 6. Uh, but I'm just picking a verse to go with this to support. H Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Not knowing in ignorance... My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they've rejected 
knowledge. And the Lord says, I will also reject you. And if I'm going to read the rest of it because it is like, woo. I'm going to reject you and you, there will be no priest to me. And seeing that you've forgotten the law of your God, I'll forget your children. So that's a big deal, folks. Parents that don't care about getting their kids to the house of God hearing the gospel, it's going to be just a sad day. It's just sad. Okay, Chaz, I want to do something real quick. Throw another scripture just come to my mind. Can you find 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 1, when we talk about the word ignorant right here? Uh, okay, keep going to the next verse. Um, the next verse. We're close. Okay, he's talking about scoffers who are, who are mocking the second coming of Christ who are saying, oh, come on, I've heard this my whole life. I don't believe it. Scoffers. Go to the next verse. And they say, where's the promise of His coming? For since the fathers you know, fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. And here's the clincher in the next verse. For this, they are willingly ignorant. It's like there's no true atheist. You know, there's no such thing as an atheist. As we know it. You say an atheist doesn't believe in God. Well, the Bible says in Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart, and the Bible literally says this, the fool has said in his heart, no God. So an atheist knows, knows there's a God, but an atheist says, no, I don't want him. I don't want nothing to do with him. I'm even going to stand up and verbally say he does not exist. And so uh, they, they're willingly ignorant. Do you see that? Amen. Don't you all think everybody in Barron County and the surrounding counties could know right now about the coming of Jesus if they would pick up a Bible and read it. But people don't want to. They want to stick their head in the sand and say it ain't going to happen. Sorry. Uh, sleep, you're ignorant. Here's another a word. Uh, for some people, I'm going to use this word. I probably won't spell it right. How do you spell insensible? Is that right? And I'm going to give a verse here. Uh, I hope this is right. Ephesians 4.19. Some, anybody in here are hard sleepers? Oh, I'm seeing some hand. Yeah, uh, Leslie and I mean, just, I mean, you know, y'all are like gone. I don't, I don't do nothing. Gone. Mm-hmm. Unconscious. If I don't leave, I'm not waking up pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 So look at these dangerous words in Ephesians 4 19 when the Bible speaks of people without Christ being past feeling. And people start viewing who are willingly ignorant, it's the sleep. Now they enter into a state of spiritual slumber where, this is scary. I I just get chills thinking about it. I'm like, it's a person that's gone. Sleep is also used as death. That's right, man. That's right. That's right. And, And people past feeling are people who... Maybe God used to deal with them, but now they're so cold, they're so gone, there's no, they don't even have any, you know. And, that, and that's what Jesus is saying. Don't sleep. Stay awake. Watch and be sober. And um, that's right. What was the third one I had? Ignorant and sensible. What house? Y'all help me out here. Um, I know this one is, is I'm going to use this one, inactive. And I, I was... Uh, use that one based on uh, Jesus said the second coming is like like a man who left his house, went on a journey and said, hey, I'm, I want you to do, take care of this. I want you to take care of that. And you do this. And when I come back, I'm gonna, it's going to be a day of reckoning. And if you didn't do it, you're going to pay. And if you did do it, you're going to be blessed. And so uh, a person that's asleep, obviously, uh, is inactive. You can't get nothing done. Put that in the spiritual sense. Uh, a person who uh, is like the guy, well, they're not doing what God wants them to do. They're living as if Jesus is not coming. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people whose name is on a church roll and you'll never find them. And so I think most of us in this room, when Jesus comes, it, he want, we, we want Him to find us doing right. Amen? We don't want to be in, ashamed at His appearing and so I use that scripture in Mark. Uh, Jesus said, this guy gave everybody a job to do. And so the Lord is, he don't want me to do Jim's job. And uh, Rob, he don't want Robin to do Patsy's job. He gives each one of us a work to do. And he says, when I come back, 
you know, I just want you to do what I've called you to do. And if every Christian would just be conscious that Jesus is coming and I want to be ready when he's coming, I want to be found serving him and, uh, and so on. So Jesus is don't sleep. Um, I had another one and I'm just went mind blank. It's, it's, uh, in, huh? Indifferent. I'm going to put that here, Robin. I'm going to use this one. I got to, I got to keep my alliterations, so I have to use all eyes. I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm going to use this word, illusion. And uh, what do you do in your sleep sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you've had a bad dream, and you're like, oh, my goodness, it was so real. It's crazy, right? You, you, you've, you've had those that were so real, and you, you thank God you woke up, you know, you fell out of the plane, and, oh, I'm in bed, I'm alive, you know. It, sometimes they can be so real and vivid. Uh, and so putting that in the spiritual mode, it's, it's this world living in a bubble. I'm so tired of the American dream language. You know, you can have it all, health, wealth, prosperity, and the whole nine yards, but if you ain't ready when Jesus comes, you're living in a bubble. You're living in a dream world, and that's where, that's where most of the people want to live. They want to live, live it up, highlight, and just, just pretend Jesus isn't coming. I don't know, but we have to live in realville where we are. Amen. So, okay, anything y'all might want to add before I'm done? I'm finished. Uh, My dad, he sleep walked and he got up and harnessed the mules. <laughs> before he woke up. <laughs> How, what's an I word for that? Huh? Insomnia. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Do y'all remember the old Arby's commercial where the guy is running through the streets? Where's everybody? Nobody. Do y'all remember that old commercial? It didn't last long. I think it started freaking people out, and, and they, they cut it off. But you, maybe you can still Google it and YouTube it or something. And um, it just, I don't even know why they did it. it it's just, but, um, and I'm... And I'm still convinced. I know you can laugh at me. It's it, you can still because I've always asked God this question, and this is, it's I know it's stupid, but I believe with all of my heart, you know, if the world could explain the rapture away, it would be with aliens coming at us. You know, that's what the military says. They see them all the time, right? Those two guys were supposed to see them in their backyard. Yeah, yeah. Harnessing their mules, right? They disappeared. Yeah, The two yeah. guys are disappeared. Yeah. God has to give every profession something to do. Okay? Thank you, brother. Thank you. What, what one, I know this is off key, but Carrie, we're done. What one Bible verse, one, destroys all alien theories. Anybody? Keep going, Daphne. You're getting close. What's it say about Eve? Oh, she's the mother of all living. Eve is yeah. the mother of all living. That's settled. It. Right? Yeah. Of course, if you don't believe the Bible, I mean, it ain't no big deal, but Ready or not, Jesus is coming. Amen? That's right. Thank you all for coming out. We had a good tasty feast and uh, hope.